Hi guys, Digital Damon here and welcome to Until Dawn. Now this is a decision making game, this is, uh, plays heavily on what they call the butterfly effect. Uh, butterfly effect, the whole idea that uh, a single flap of a butterfly's wing could end up causing a tsunami elsewhere in the world. But, uh, this sort of plays on the idea that your decisions will heavily affect on the decisions in the further in the rest of the game. So much so that it is a case where they choose whether characters might live or might die. Now, uh, I've not played this game before. Uh, I know it's sort of, it's, it's almost like the cliche 90s, early 2000s horror film slasher thing, I think. But it's all, all about uh, a group of teenagers who go to a cabin in the woods. That's always a good start for a horror film. Let's see what it entails. New story. The butterfly effect. A tiny butterfly flapping its wings today may lead to a devastating hurricane weeks from now. Looks like more of a moth, really, than a, uh, the butterfly, but... So... Yes, uh, the smallest de decision can dramatically change the future. Looks more like a moth, really. I don't know, there's this sort of... Your actions will shape how the story unfolds. Now, I suppose moths have more... Their wings go down, whereas the butterfly goes out, I think. There's some sort of thorax difference as well, but uh, I am not that much on... So, your story... is one of many possibilities. That's cool. If it's going to be that, choose your actions carefully. If it's going to be that diverse, going in many different directions, this might even require multiple playthroughs. So let's have a look. There's a cabin in the woods. That much we knew. Oh, I'm excited about this game. So we are introduced to our teenagers. General rules on horror films, uh, you swear, you're going to die, you have sex, you drink alcohol, you do drugs, you're going to die. Um, it's usually, it follows the rule of the last female for this sort of the cliché. Man with machete, that's another sort of uh, cliché of the horror film. I'm going to be talking about a lot of clichés and stereotypes in horror, God, in horror uh, films, I think. Because that's what this ho heavily relies on. Oh, it's Hazen, um, what's her name? Uh, Hazen Panettiere. Moves on him. Uh, just go from heroes. Just because he's class pres doesn't mean he belongs to everyone. Mike is my man. I am. I'm not anybody's man. <laughs> Whatever you say, darling. Okay. Okay, so she is clearly going to be the big name, and this she's clearly going to be our last surviving hero, I would assume. Saying that we can control, or I can control, <laughs> whether people live or die. Uh, I'm going to be talking quite a lot. I'll try and keep quiet when the uh, characters are talking. But I have put on subtitles just in case that doesn't happen. So, hello, Hannah. You have a candle. Mike? It's Hannah. Hey, Hannah. Okay. So this is obviously happening elsewhere in the place. We've got, uh, okay, who's gonna die? Hey, did you see that? Yeah, I prefer it just be horror films weekend. that keep the evil sort of hidden, hidden out of the way and with left, leave us Gosh. guessing rather than just obviously um, put us that we've got the, uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm in control. Uh, obviously put the, this is the bad guy, this is the enemy. Ones that build sort of an air of suspense and mystery uh, are the other uh, things to go. So we've got Resident Evil style glowy items. What's this? Tutorial. Press and hold R2 to pick up the note. That I can do. Uh, tutorial. I'll stick to. Okay, so we can rotate items. Hannah, you look damn hot in that shirt, but I bet you look even hotter out of it. Come to the guest room. At 2 a.m., winky face, Mike, kiss, kiss, kiss. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god, indeed. What did our naive sister get herself into now? So it's clearly oh. some sort of prank going on Direction with time. this character's sister. So what about these two uh, people that clearly are passed out here? 
It's a good looking game, I have to say. I'm saying that about a lot of these PlayStation 4 games. It is a good looking game. It's, I really enjoyed um, Heavy Rain, which was a, like a similar sort of vein. That, uh, oh, something's going over there. Which was very sort of decision based, affects your actions, where the characters live or die as well. It's, it's a genre I really like, so use it to look around and expect to. Oh, okay, so we actually have to be facing them to be able to interact, I see. Uh, press and hold R2, so I'm going to have to get used to holding... Uh, Jeremiah Cragg. That's Irish 12-year-old whiskey. Jeez, Josh. A man after my own heart. Once again, brother, you've outdone us all. Well, I do prefer the, uh, the Scottish whiskeys. Uh, Irish whiskeys tend to be a bit minerally. Glad you can make it. But Jameson's is nice. So, what are you doing? Maybe we should start with a little, you know, making out and see where it goes from there. So casual, so casual about this sort of thing. Oh, hell yeah. And just, that's it, straight into it, taking off your own shirt. Oh my god. She's, She's got a butterfly tattoo. What? Oh my god. Matt? That's a selfie stick, isn't it? What are you doing it? here? Oh. Hannah. I'm sorry, Hannah. Hannah. Hey. Let's all get oh, out of here. Just a stupid prank. Uh. Hey, you guys are jerks. You know that? And they have a selfie Hannah. stick. Right, he deserves to die. I didn't catch which one it was. I think I had short dark hair, so... Uh... Use the... What? To choose decisions. Uh, wait, Josh. Uh, well, he's, he's drinking whiskey. He's, uh, he's clearly out of it, so find others. Guys! There's someone outside. What the hell? They're, they're all down there. Anna! What's going on? Where's my sister going? It's She's fine. the only one in the coat. can't take a joke. It was oh, no, just a prank, Han. Yeah, it what was just a prank, Han. Just messing around, man. It wasn't serious. You jerks! Right, Hannah. so we're now going looking for Hannah, Hannah, I'm guessing. So, should we go after her? You know, I kind of think you're the last person she wants to see right now, Mike. Tutorial. Oh, shit. Quick time, well, quick time events. Fun. Excellent. Yeah, actually... These type of games do tend to have a lot of quick time. If uh, well, we're looking for a fast before she freezes, so fast, I guess. Um, yeah, if you look at games like Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls, there was a lot of quick time events in them. But I think that's just the thing of these type of games. Okay. Fast little, uh, uh, fall footprints, fall noise. No, that was uh, a bird or something snapping a. We're in the woods. Could be anything. We've got animals, all sorts. Right, right, it's like animals. Oh, oh. Yeah, well, they start off. Jesus! Fuck! Shit! There may be strong language in this. Damn it, Hannah. Where are you? Well, I follow the footprints. Just keep following the footprints. Yeah, that seems safe. Is it selfie time? Touch the pad of shit? Ooh, that's clever. Huh. That's a neat little feature. Hannah! Okay, so we now have a, uh, a light. Interesting. It's nice how it sort of plays on modern technologies. It's clever, I like that. Okay, so... We've slowed down a bit. Uh, elk everywhere. Uh, hold L2 to walk a little faster. Uh, L1 even. L1. Hello? Sorry, is that faster? Hello? Okay, some little, something's glittering down here. What's this? What's that? A toad? Death totem. Right. Well, that's a death totem. We found a death totem. Yeah, we'll just put that back on the ground. Um, okay. So does that mean I'm going to die? Well, no, don't we? We'll do a random little circle thing. So does that mean I'm going to die? Is that predicting my death? Oh, footprints Hannah. in the snow. That's cool. 
Oh shit, yeah, sorry, I'm... That is not walking quicker. What the hell was that? We're fighting dragons now? Sounds like a flamethrower, to be Hannah. fair. Hannah! And you're wearing a t-shirt. Hannah! Oh my god, you must be So freezing. is that the killer? The killer has a flamethrower as well as a machete. <laughs> And Predator Vision. They're just throwing them all in here, really, aren't they? Anna, so, is it human? Is it supernatural? Or does it depend on how you play? Anna! Is it having a general... Ah, that, that would be cool if that's the case. Is it a general spectrum of things now? There's a phone. That was key. We'll have to find that later, I imagine. Jesus Christ. Yeah, a wide spectrum now. And then, depending on how we play, depends on what the evil entity is. If that's no. the case, that is very no. cool. No. So, yeah, slow back, Predator. Fuck! No! That was Hannah the one that uh, died in the, the breath token. Well, this is precarious. No. Hold on! Yeah, that's definitely a flame card. Hold flame on! Flame card, Predator vision. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's got a flame card. Um, it seems like she's a helper. Oh, guess it. But who was trying to kill him? Surely... No, he was definitely reaching the helper there. Oh, no. Yeah, well, we're dead. The killer was definitely reaching to help us, not uh, the analyst. Dr. A.J. Hill. Okay, so is that the prologue out of the way then? Before we begin, oh. there are a few things I need Peter to make uh, sure you understand. He's in Fargo. You see, no one can change what happened last year. The past is beyond our you control. You want pancakes? You have to accept this in order to move forward. But there is freedom. This revelation. Everything you do, every decision you make from now on will open doors okay. to the your, future. Your contact. I want you to game. remember this. I want you to remember this as you play your game. Every single choice will affect your fate and the fate of those around you. Hi. So little bit up on my grill. I'm committed to commence with this game. This is significant. Is he talking to me? And I the want player. to help you see it through. Sometimes, sometimes these things can be a little scary, even terrifying, but I'm here to make sure that no matter how upsetting things may get, you will always find a way to work through. Okay, so you're sort of my tutorial type guide character. All right. So we will start with a simple exercise. Are you in the future, the past, Could you or in my head? Card? One of those three is and correct. I want you to look at the picture on the other side and tell me what you feel about it. It, it is essential that you answer honestly in order to get the most out of this experience. Mm. Yes, decisions. That's what we expect in a decision-based game. So, okay. Hold R2. So is this me, the player? It's... Hi guys, Digital Demon here. Uh, my apologies slightly, for some reason my webcam cut out at this point during the recording. Uh, so I am recording this um, post. Uh, so, so I will try and do the best I can to remember what, uh, what sort of uh, rubbish I was talking feel. about. It's remember also why honest. my um, face cam isn't appearing here. So at this point I'm more confused more than anything. So. Uh, a feeling of unease is closer to confusion than a feeling of happy, so I end up choosing. Uh, I feel okay. uneasy. Honesty is good. What do you think it is that makes you feel uneasy? The, basically, I'm, I'm, from this point, I'm not sure because if it is I, I don't know. I don't know what at this point in the game. I don't know what he's uneasy. trying to uh, to get from me. Um, I mean, luckily, I caught on to this for the, the second episode. I got all these problems all sorted. But um, 
for this point. I'm just speculating on what on earth I could feel uneasy about this uh, particular uh, picture. Uh, I can't remember if I've talked about it in this episode already, but from what I'm gathering, uh, having these conversation with Peter Storm, uh, Stormare's character, um, basically it feels like I am setting up the. Um, <gasps> so, I am setting up not in what the whole house, story I am about to have, then and then with the teenagers, I'm playing through that story. Can it be in the field? So, you know, I'm establishing, I'm, I'm trying to work out what could possibly be happening. Now, I'm not afraid of scarecrows. I have no idea what's going on in the barn. Is this threat I have real, no idea or is it what's going on in your the field. imagination? But this is an interesting question. Is it real or is it in my imagination? Now, I have a feeling this character is in my imagination. And I also think, yes. Psychological oh, horrors. That's something I'm a big fan of. And I think I'm sort of trying to cater it. Perhaps we can explore your fears so a bit further a, in our next uh, psychological session. horror. Afraid. We've run out of time. Run out of time. Always the way with these types of um, psychologists and psychiatrists. You just make a breakthrough and then you run out of time. But it is a very short session. These moments do repeat through the game. Um, at the time I'm recording this, I'm about five episodes in, and we've met um, uh, Dr. Hill twice, I believe. And then we get the, the introduction sequence. Uh, it's a really interesting opening credit sequence for me. I actually studied uh, title sequences at uni. Um, it stems back from um, Seven. The title sequence for Seven uh, was designed by a guy called Carl Cooper, and it sort of set the principle that a theme or a story gets told within the title sequence. I mean, with that film, it was an insight into the killer's psyche, whereas uh, that's sort of an art form that developed all on its own. Uh, so the title sequences do fascinate me. So we, we have our big name. We've got Hayden Pantier. Uh, We've got uh, Peter Stormare. We're we'll still probably not pronouncing his name right because I'm doing this in post production. But still, um, I didn't know who these two were at the time, but um, Rami Ma uh, Malik is actually uh, the Pharaoh in the Metal Museum of all things. I believe he's also in a show at the moment called uh, Mr. Robot. Uh, I also just wanted to briefly apologise for the quality of the mic in this. Um, in these first few recordings, I think I had the mic a little bit too close to my uh, to my face. So I will watch. Today is the one year anniversary uh, of the dreadful tragedy that took place on Mount Washington. Annie Klein was in charge of the investigation. Thanks for having me, Marty. For listeners, an update on Hannah and Beth Washington, the, the twins who are still missing. One year ago tonight, the Washington girls left the safety of their parents' lodge and headed out into a snowstorm. Foul play. Not officially, no. There is one individual we're considering as a person of interest, but his whereabouts are currently unknown. He has an interesting history with the Washington family. He had warned them against pursuing their construction project and claimed the land was sacred to his forefathers. You know, there is still the old sanatorium on the mountain. Could he be hiding there? My officers did search the grounds, but the girls themselves couldn't have made it that far. Something about that mountain seems to breed tragic events. More than you know, Marty. Thank you for joining us, Anne. With all the Washingtons tonight, their son Josh, on this this, the anniversary of the mysterious disappearance of Hannah and Beth Washington. It is just all speculation. Well, hello, friends and fans. And, uh, all yeah, right, let's do that again. We're now getting into uh, Josh's YouTube video. All right. Something well, seems hello, so far too friends familiar. and fans. It's beyond awesome to have you guys all back this year. I think at this um, point, first I was, uh, off, I gotta say I am super excited to welcome all my pals back he... to the annual Blackwood Winter Getaway. Yeah. <laughs> I have his little so, celebration. So, um, let me just let you know, uh, let's take a moment to address the elephant in the room for a second. I know you're all probably worried about me, and I know it's going to be tough on all of us going back after what happened last year, but I just want you all to know, um, it means, it means so much to me that we're doing this and that 
I know it would mean so much to Hannah and Beth that we're, we're all still here together, and I'm thinking of them. I really want to spend some quality time with e each and every one of you and um, just share some moments that we'll never forget for, for the sake of my sisters and, you know. Okay, so let's party like we're fucking porn stars, okay? Make this one trip we will never forget, so, uh, all right? At this point, I was, I was yes! discussing how messed up the character of Josh would be. If you the last we saw Josh was he tracking now these are different images and being representative characters so they've got the most from the I tend to have a conversation about three different things at once, so if you can follow this, then you, you'll get on well with my commentaries. You have a whiskey with your friends, you pass out, you wake up, and your sisters are dead. It's gonna really, really mess up with you, so that character would be under some severe psychological So, part one, friendship. And we have ten hours until dawn. So we're now back in control, and here comes the guy with the machete, this mystery man uh, that will become appa more apparent later on. So it's still setting up like he's the killer. I don't actually think he is the killer at this point, but here we have Sam, we have Hannah's best friend, diligent, considerate, and adventurous. So what I am trying to do, get these little um, blurbs of, on the introduction Hello? of each character, and I am trying to play Someone the there? game according to those characters' traits as best as I can. So I will keep popping to their stats, to how I think that character would react in that situation. Not necessarily what I would do, but how that character would react. Yeah, it's... it's I remember thinking this was um, a very Resident Evil type feel to it at the point. Uh, I do love the Resident Evil games. Not so much the films, but at least up until Resident Evil 4, the games were absolutely brilliant. And it's like we're, appro we're approaching a big manor oh, in the middle of the woods. But it is supposed to be a cabin. I think it's, there's two different buildings. There's, there's a lodge and there's a, a cabin. So it's saying that and we've got a note from Chris, who we'll meet in a little bit. And... Being diligent, we climb this wall nice and safely. And I also wonder, these are very quick, quick time events, and how quick they would be is if I actually went down the quick route. But slow, steady, and safe, that's our Sam. Watching it back now, actually, they don't seem that fast, but certainly at the time they seemed a lot faster. Maybe that was uh, because I was in the moment, as it were. And then she'd jump off and get some bad news like I did. I'm, I'm always jumping stuff. I'm a big child, really. That's that's kind of uh, what I am. I do love the fact that the footprints are left behind in the snow. It's such a great attention to detail. Aww. Say, little fella. And this introduces the d don't move huh? uh, element of this game. Something that I think I'm going to have to master because <laughs> I get the feeling I actually naturally shake just a little bit. So keeping perfectly still is something that I am going to have to try very, very hard to do. Especially if it ends up being key towards the game. So I think I'm just having a look at Sam's uh, statistics at this point. What type of person he is and the relationships uh, she has with the ca other characters. And you can see she's not even halfway for any of the characters, so she's Hannah's best friend. She doesn't really care about these people that we're going to see. She's coming to the this lodge as a mark of respect to Hannah and her sister. But yeah, we can see from that that she's honest, she's charitable, and she's brave. So we will try and play the character of Sam in that manner.
I think it's uh, interesting that Jess and Mike are the sort of two lowest characters and that the little white lines seem to represent the starting point and as it goes over time the relationship status will change between characters. I think that's really really interesting how you can build, you can sort of change the attributes of the character and build on the relationships between different characters as we play through the game. It's a really really interesting uh, thing really. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, we now just have the information about the uh, Injun Burial Ground, the Indigenous People and Butterfly Prophecies. Um, I'll leave that on the screen so you can have a, uh, a nice little read of that. Uh, I'd read it again, but the screen I've been watching it on at the moment is actually quite small cons uh, compared with the TV I did at the time, so I can't really make out much of the, uh, the text, unfortunately. But the long and short of it is... Black totems are death totems, the uh, red danger, the brown are loss, the yellow are guidance, and the white are fortune. So we'd want mostly yellows and whites, but they don't necessarily have these, these predictions, these visions don't actually have to come true. It's just something you can use to cater uh, how you play your game. Well, like I say, leave that on there. You can have a good read of that. But that's the that's the uh, the long and short of it. I think there's actually a totem by my feet at this point, so I'll probably have a look at that in a second. Yeah, that's automatically picking it up. So you'll notice there's a little bit of colour on the back. This seems to represent the colour of what the totem is as well, even though it says we have to turn it over to find out what colour it is. I guess this was yellow because the little yellow patch. When I turn it over, we find it's a yellow totem. So we see a bird, and we see someone in a flannel shirt, hiding behind a tree. So, you wonder what that's to do with, if we see a bird on the table, we're going to hide behind a tree. Well certainly that's what I thought at the time. I don't want to reveal too much of it uh, at this point, but we are coming towards the end of the episode luckily, and we'll be back in the live commentary for the next episode. So. And what I'm, what this is something I'm going to be doing as well. I try and analyse the totems. So there's the black totem that we have. We have the death totem. And I noticed just watching this back, I didn't spot Beth in the background. I thought it was just Hannah's. So I wondered if that was if you dropped Hannah. But if you uh, actually watch it again, yes, you can see uh, Beth. And I'm just like, so I'm guessing no matter what you do, both the characters die there. Do I watch it again or do I move on to the other one? I can't remember. I move on to the other one. There we go. And then we see the bird and I try and work out, I think, what's going on there. So we see a bird on the table. The uh, We notice at this point the character is actually getting up. Where it's a male character wearing a flannel shirt. I uh, don't think we've been introduced to him yet, so I'm not going to ruin anything in that regard. Uh, I've also noticed stuff that I don't really want to pay too much attention to because this is all the choices of how the butterfly effects take shape in this game. Uh, we've got the stats as well. Um, so I'm just having a play. But if you look at the vision on that game, look at the view, it's a beautiful, beautiful game. And what I'm going to say now is, thank you so much for watching. I am the Digital Demon. This is Until Dawn. Sorry again for my messed up recording, but I should have it sorted for the next episode. In fact, I will have it sorted for the next episode. Thank you for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Catch you later.